Like and subscribe right now, or you're gonna have terrible luck for the next week. There are over 32,000 known fish species, according to National Geographic, which shows just how diverse this group is. And while everyone knows of the big guys like sharks with their razor-sharp teeth, there are smaller and potentially more dangerous fish that we'll be looking at in this video. Here we go, the 10 most poisonous fish in the world. Number 10, Lionfish. To the onlooker, the lionfish is such a beauty with its showy white, creamy, red, and sometimes black bands. Perhaps that's why these guys are quite popular in home aquariums in the United States. But to the lionfish, the bands are more than just a beauty statement. They're a warning for any ocean predators to keep their distance. That's unless they can withstand the sting of the venomous spikes. Most ocean carnivores seem to understand the warning, seeing as the lionfish have very few natural predators. While they keep them safe out there in the ocean waters, lionfish stings can have far-reaching effects on humans. The injected venom causes extreme pain, sweating, heartburn, headache, breathing difficulties, and diarrhea, among other effects. In extreme cases, especially for those with an allergy, the venom can cause heart failure, paralysis, and eventually death. Number 9. Stargazer. You can't deny, this is probably one of the coolest animal names. It all comes from their eyes, large and mounted right on top of their head, and they play a significant role in the fish's hunting life. To catch prey, the stargazer buries itself at the bottom of the ocean and shoots upwards in case an animal passes by. To increase the chances of attracting a passing meal, some species of the stargazer have a worm-like growth on the floor of their mouths. All they have to do is wave it, and the potential prey will swim towards them, only to get devoured. The most interesting part about this hunting is the stargazer's ability to deliver both an electric shock and venom to its victims, so it's pretty much impossible for target prey to get away as soon as it lands within a stargazer's reach. While all stargazer species deliver their venom via two large spines, the means of generating shock vary across the family. In some species, the shock originates from a set of modified eye muscles, while in others, electricity is generated in the sonic muscles. While lethal to most marine prey, stargazer's venom doesn't pose harm to humans, so the fish are eaten around the world without the need for any special preparation. Well, as long as you can carefully remove the bile and the electric organ. Number 8. Crown of Thorns Starfish the crown of thorns starfish is shaped pretty much like any other starfish out there, but unlike its peers, it has slightly more arms, extending to as many as over 20, and each one of these arms has numerous spines that are sharp, stiff, and venomous. These spikes serve a single purpose, deter and defend the crown of thorns starfish from any would-be predators. The starfish doesn't have a particular method of envenomation though. The spikes will pierce just deep enough until the victim's skin comes into contact with the starfish's tissues that contain a special chemical called saponin. This causes an immediate sharp pain that can persist up to a few hours. Other effects include swelling, persistent bleeding, and nausea, especially in humans. Even worse, the spikes could easily break off due to their brittle nature, causing a whole lot of other problems. Aside from being irritating, the saponins also have an unpleasant taste, making the crown of thorns starfish unpalatable to most aquatic predators. That said, they still get fed on by the likes of Triton's trumpet, triggerfish, and bufferfish. They also get attacked, especially when young, by small crabs who view them as a threat. Number 7. Stingray First off, stingrays are hardly aggressive. For a larger part, they spend their time swimming either close to or on the seabed, foraging for unfortunate seabed dwellers to feed on, so their mouths are on the underside, making it easier to pick up a meal. Their general coloration is also reminiscent of the ocean floor, so they can easily hide from both predators and prey. That means when they're at the bottom of the sea, stingrays always anticipate at least two things, either being found by a predator or bumping into a morsel. The former makes a stingray particularly dangerous when it's buried deep in the ocean's sandy floor. When threatened or stepped on, it delivers an extremely painful sting using its barbed stinger. And on top of that, the sting also packs venom that can very well be fatal if it's pumped into a vital body organ. So stingrays aren't as venomous as some of the fish in this video as long as the barbs don't pierce a vital organ. Number 6. Giant Moray the giant moray is a type of moray eel known for its huge size. In terms of body mass, it is by far the largest moray eel, 
but it's dwarfed in length by the slender giant moray, which is the longest. On average, a giant moray eel can grow to be 3 meters long and weigh in at 30 kilograms. That size is enough to fend off most predators, which have consequently made these guys apex predators in their habitat. And eating their flesh is probably the last thing anyone would want to do. They've been proven to contain ciguatoxin that can lead to several undesirable effects like low blood pressure, vomiting, diarrhea, and dizziness, among others. That's from eating the flesh. Eating the liver is more dangerous and could cause coma or even death. Giant morays aren't usually aggressive, but will attack and bite if they feel threatened or in the presence of food. Number 5. Blenny Blenny is a huge group of fish, usually tiny, and live both in shallow waters and in deep seas. But for a larger part, they all prefer staying near the bottom. Owing to their teeny sizes, most of them are no match against larger fish species looking to snack on them. But some species have intoxicating venom that significantly tilt the odds in their favor. The blenny delivers this venom through a bite that causes, according to the New York Times, a violent quivering of the predator's head. This gives the blenny enough time to safely swim away. The venom isn't as dangerous, but has been observed to cause an up to 40% drop in blood pressure in mice. That's enough to cause fainting in human beings. Number 4. Pufferfish Pufferfish are generally slow, which makes them the perfect snack for most marine predators. But that isn't the case. Since they can't swiftly swim away, even if they wanted to, pufferfish can swallow large amounts of water and expand to several times their size, making them uneatable. More effectively, some species have spines, which aren't the kind of thing any predator would want to deal with. Nevertheless, a pufferfish can't always tell if it's about to be snatched up by some hungry marine predator. A majority of pufferfish species contain one of the most potent toxins, called tetrodotoxin. So sooner or later, any fish that's unlucky enough to gobble up a pufferfish finds out that it just made the biggest and last mistake of its life. According to National Geographic, tetrodotoxin is about 1,200 times more deadly than cyanide, and a single pufferfish contains enough of it to kill up to 30 adult humans. This makes the pufferfish the most poisonous fish in the world. Number 3. Stonefish The stonefish holds the title of the most venomous fish in the world, which means an encounter with any one of these guys is not only unpleasant, but might just push you over the edge to the other world. Their stings, which they deliver via a series of spines on their back, are excruciatingly painful and are accompanied by a highly potent venom. No worries though, stonefish are themselves chill, hanging out at the bottom of the sea most of the time. They don't attack, and the only way you'll get stung is if you step on them. But considering their camouflage that makes them look like stones at the bottom of the sea, accidentally touching one is quite likely. So maybe the next time you're in the water, you should probably try not to touch any weird looking stones. Now it's time for today's best pick. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber, so if you come across a photo online and want to know more details about it, just send it over to us. We might even feature it in a future video. Number 2. Clownfish Clownfish are known for their white and bright orange bars. This gives them the characteristic appearance of a clown, hence the name. They're also called anemone fish, since they live among sea anemones in a symbiotic arrangement. On one hand, the sea anemone is a perfect deterrent for would-be clownfish predators with its stinging tentacles on top of providing food from its meal scraps. The anemone fish, on the other hand, also defend its hosts from predators and provides nutrients via excrement. Plus, the bright colored clownfish is perfect to attract unsuspecting fish, which are then paralyzed by the sea anemone's venomous tentacles. So the clownfish aren't toxic themselves, but are protected by another venomous organism. But then, how do they survive the stinging tentacles? Scientists have suggested that clownfish are covered by a layer of sugar-based mucus. That means the sea anemones don't recognize the fish as potential prey, and as a result, their stinging mechanism can't be activated. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number 1. Boxfish The boxfish is a close relative of pufferfish, so it's kind of no surprise that it's also just as venomous. 
As a family, boxfish has one distinguishing feature. They are covered by a protective box-like exoskeleton, hence their name. The exoskeleton is usually enough to keep most predators away, but the boxfish have another survival mechanism. They secrete poison from their skin into water. The secretion is mucus for a larger part and has one important component called ostracitoxin. This is the compound that gives the secretion the vital defense properties that the boxfish need to fend off threats. The fish goes into an overdrive synthesizing the toxin as soon as it's disturbed or senses a potential predator lurking nearby in the waters. Any wise marine carnivore stays away as soon as it sees the waters around a boxfish turning a bit cloudy. Surprisingly, the toxin is harmful to other boxfish as well. With that said, the fish has to be alive to produce the toxin, so it's possible to find a dead boxfish completely devoid of it.